Renewable energy sources like solar and wind hold the promise of a cleaner environment and growing our economy. But you know, dig a little deeper and you will find that even green energy can have an impact on wildlife and habitat if not managed properly. These massive turbines are now part of one of the fastest growing industries in the world. There is no doubt this type of renewable energy will lead to a cleaner environment. Still, there are some trade-offs. We are north of Pincher Creek and west of the Old Man Dam, and this area is kind of a good illustration of why we have developed the directus. Um, the re main reason we did was because we needed to deal with the issues of, uh, with wind farms in regards to wildlife. And this site is kind of a characteristic of a not a great site for siting a wind farm because it had native grassland or along major ridges and valleys. And these areas are really attractive to wildlife for both habitat, for breeding and reproducing, but also for uh, migration. And so we have increased risk here for wildlife. With the expectation of generating almost 30% of Alberta's electricity through wind and solar energy, it became clear that a set of directives were needed to guide the industry in making informed decisions on where to locate new wind turbine sites. We're all familiar with the uh, not so good news stories where you hear frontline headlines about eagles killed at turbines and things like that. There is a real risk there and there's a history of risk from other developments that have been placed in not so great locations. So the new directives are now really taking all that information and those learnings from the past from other jurisdictions across North America and making sure that we do better so that we minimize risk and don't have those unfortunate stories of things like eagles dying in at turbines at high numbers. Raptors are not the only species to be affected by these blades, which can achieve speeds of up to 290 kilometers per hour. It's estimated that turbines have killed millions of bats across North America, which has biologists concerned about overall population numbers. I think it's important that the province has clear guidelines for what is an appropriate location to place a turbine and what is not an appropriate location to put a turbine. Uh, we know that turbines placed in inappropriate locations are likely to have extremely high levels of bat mortality. A lot of features are well known to be attractive to bats. We know that riparian areas are attractive to bats. We know that wetlands are attractive to bats, areas with old forest, rock outcrops. Uh, there's lots of structures that we know are going to attract bats, so it's really important that the turbines are not placed in proximity to those locations. For its part, the wind industry sees the directives as a good move, providing clear guidance when it comes to installing turbines on new sites. Our members look at that and, and are you know, happy that there is clarity and predictability as to what the government expectation on, uh, on wind siting is. It provides not only clarity for us as industry, but provides clarity for communities and stakeholders and landowners to show that there is frankly some pretty strict guidelines as to how wind farms can be uh, sited on property throughout the, the province here. The implementation of the directives has led to tangible results. Basically, this site is pretty much perfect <laughs> in our opinion. It's in an area of existing disturbance. As you can see, it's been cultivated. It's near an existing highway. There's very limited wildlife features, such as house nests or dens, for which would cause issues for wildlife. So in using our wildlife directives, this site is a good illustration of what we expect to see in wind, wind uh, siting in Alberta. Of course, the province will continue to monitor mortality rates to ensure even these new sites are not having a negative impact on wildlife and habitat. One of the information pieces we're trying to get more on is what is the true impact to mortalities at turbines to populations. Even the best sited turbine will have some low level mortality to birds and bats. And what we're trying to do is understand is there a point when a certain amount of turbines in an area might contribute to mortalities at a level that we might need to do more mitigation or work with industry to slow down development in other areas and promote development in different areas because the risk to populations are too great. So we're using the monitoring data that we collect with industry and making sure that we inform better decisions moving forward by learning. Of course, turbines not the only thing being monitored. Other infrastructure elements like power lines, roads and substations need to fit into the overall habitat strategy. And as we move into that direction, we will truly be 
producing green energy. Till next time, I'm Michael Short. Let's go outdoors.